Hey YouTube, what's up? Scott Drummond here. Today we're gonna go over the Perspective Tools and Clip Studio Paint. This is a totally awesome feature that's gonna help save you time and get your backgrounds looking fantastic. We're chilling in a new spot in the studio, so I think it looks pretty cool, looks pretty nice. We're gonna try out some new video stuff, got a different camera working today. So if you like all this stuff, let me know in the comments. But yeah, let's get to it. All right, so here we are in Clip Studio Paint. We're gonna go over a couple things. First off, we're gonna go and uh, we're gonna make some perspective rulers, pretty easy, easy enough. We're gonna show you how to adjust those rulers. Uh, we're gonna show you how to turn those rulers on and off. There are a couple different ways to do that. Uh, we're gonna use these rulers as reference layers or uh, so you can adjust other things. And we're gonna show you some uh, pretty cool uh, other kinds of special rulers that exist within Clip Studio Paint kind of as a bonus. All right, so let's jump into this. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make some perspective rulers. Uh, the way that I like to do this is uh, we'll jump over here, make a new layer, and go up to the layers up top here, and go to ruler, create a perspective ruler. Pretty easy, right? There's a few different ways you can do this. Uh, you can do 1.2.3. .2 point. I prefer three point, uh, this is how I usually work, but maybe uh, one of these is better for you. Uh, so I go up there and do that. So what's going to do is create some really cool uh, pers perspective rulers right off the bat. Uh, the blue right here is going to be your horizon line. And then these purple lines are the lines where you uh, basically go out. So if you are on a pencil tool or on a pen tool or whatnot, you click on one of those. All of your lines that you create will uh, snap to one of those things. So uh, you can uh, pretty easily and quickly create some nice stuff. Uh, so you could, you know, quickly rough in, uh, let's say a building or, or whatever, uh, or a, a sphere, or not a sphere, I suppose, but a uh, rectangle situation going on here. Uh, really easy way to do that. But, but obviously if you're making these perspective rulers, you don't necessarily want to just do whatever they pick out of the box for you. So you're gonna to wanna to change these rulers up a little bit. Uh, the way you can do that is by going up to this uh, little icon, the operation uh, tool here, and you can then click on each individual thing and it'll bring up a different, uh, a few different menu things for you. So you wanna change the point of your horizon line, you can grab on this little green handle here and move it around. The little pluses here will let you tilt uh, the horizon line. And you can see how that works. Uh, you can also hold the shift key to have that snap to uh, the 45 degree angle there. So that's pretty cool. I like to keep it pretty straightforward for this one. Uh, the other thing you can do with these uh, horizon lines that are going back is you can either grab these circles, which will uh, let you adjust the line while keeping the uh, point in the same spot. So let's say if you've sketched out something initially, I'm going to go back uh, and create a different layer so I can sketch out a, a cube that I think I want to, you know, uh, be pretty close to keeping on there. So that's an awful looking cube, but it will do. Um, and if I go back to my perspective rulers, I can uh, go to the operation tool and place this horizon sort of where I think it is and uh, grab the circle part and put this uh, right there. And then I can use these pluses to sort of adjust uh, the direction that's going. So I can do it this way and grab this one and that looks pretty good. So now every line that I make going that way will uh, be within that perspective of that, of that box. You can also of course adjust the, uh, by just grabbing this blue perspective point and pulling it out in, in, in different ways. Um, if you zoom out, you can see where your third perspective tool, uh, per perspective point is up here. I can grab that, pull it up there, grab this guy, pull it there. And now I can you know, fade that guy back, create a pretty nice looking, completely in perspective box. Boom. Exciting stuff. So that's how you adjust the rulers. If you want to turn these rulers on and off, there's a couple different ways to do it. First off, is you want to keep them all active, but just for the moment, uh, stop snapping to the rulers. You can do that a couple different ways. 
you can go up to view and hit snap to special ruler here or hit the Apple II key or control two on the PC and uh, turn that off. And now if I'm on this layer, it just kind of goes wherever and I go back up and do it and it will then snap like it was before. I'm gonna undo those. The other way you can do this at the top, there's these uh, easy snap icons here. This middle one is a snap to special ruler. So if you prefer to do it this way, you can just click that and do this, click it back on again, and now you're, you're snapping in no time. We'll undo those guys. The other last way you can turn one of these off is uh, going back to your uh, uh, operation tool here and you tap on one of these and next to these lines are these kind of diamonds that I haven't talked about yet. If you tap on the diamond, you'll see that it turns green here and uh, though that uh, line at this point now will not be referenced. So if I try to make a line that kind of follows that, it won't do it because that line is now green. So sometimes you can accidentally click one of those. I've done that before and it's really frustrating. So if you've, uh, if you've got your perspective rulers on and they're just not snapping, that's probably what's happened. You probably accidentally clicked this little diamond uh, in the middle here. So you can see now that totally works. Now let's say you like this real, this box and it looks really good, but you want to put some detail on that box on a separate layer. And you still want to keep this perspective ruler on that layer. Well, there's a couple different ways to do that. You can either just take that perspective ruler, hold down the uh, option key, or uh, I think it's the alt key on a PC, and drag that to your new layer here, and it will duplicate that perspective ruler. But that's sort of a messy way because if you uh, decide that you want to change one of these, you know, and be like, oh, okay, I want this guy here. Actually, this works a little bit better. It will not change for the, the other one. So uh, if that's the goal, then that works out great. If, it, if that's not the goal, you want to keep that same perspective ruler instead. Let's undo that. What we can do is uh, go to your new layer that you want to draw on. You know, first off, it's a, uh, you know, no, no perspective rulers involved there. And then you can hit this little area in the middle between the eyeball and the actual layer preview and uh, hit that check mark there, which will use this layer as a reference layer for layer four. So now if I'm drawing on layer four, it will still uh, use that perspective ruler, which is really super handy. And I just check that box off again and I'm back to just uh, drawing whatever I feel like. So pretty good, pretty cool stuff. The last thing I'm gonna show you guys is a couple different special rulers that Clip Studio has that are really great to use for different things. Down here uh, is this little um, ruler icon. You can either click this or hit the U key, I think it is. Uh, and you've got a di bunch of different rulers here. So you can uh, have some different kind of rulers that are already kind of loaded in there. Um, you got your classic linear ruler and curve ruler, all that kind of stuff. So linear ruler is pretty simple. You just kind of grab that and then whatever you draw will just stick to that one simple line, which maybe you want that. But I would have, if instead of doing that, what I'll usually do is just tap once and then hold the shift key and then tap again. It seems to be a, a quicker way to do uh, those sorts of lines for me. Uh, so I rarely use that ruler. Uh, the other kinds of rulers you got is a curve ruler, so you can kind of show how that works. It is by you just make some curves like that, and I think you double tap at the end to stop that, and so now your line will just follow that curve. But the main one I use is this special ruler right here. Um, if you go to your tool property over here, under special ruler, you can choose the different kinds you want. And so this one is a, a, a focus line, so I've chosen focus line essentially from this drop down here. At that point, you can just click on your canvas and it'll create your ruler over here. And at that point, you just grab your pen tool and every line that you create will sort of emanate from that focus line, which is pretty cool a way to do like some, some nice effects for, let's say I'll get a bigger brush. So some nice, nice lines like that you can kind of um, create with this tool. The other one of these I use a lot in fact, I use it so often that I made it a separate one of these is a concentric circle ruler. So if you don't have one of these already, what you do is just um, duplicate any one of these by hitting this um, 
new button down here, create copy of currently selected ones, and then you can edit it under the tool properties. And you change this special ruler to concentric circle, which is great. So if you know, let's say you want a bunch of like you're making some tires or whatever, you click down in the middle and you drag out and then you sort of create that shape first off. And then when you let go, it will still kind of follow you a little bit and you can position it the way you'd like. And then you tap again or click again and it creates these concentric circles, which is great. You can also, when you're tapping, just hold the shift key and it'll create a perfect circle. And then if it's perfect, it doesn't really matter where you click again because uh, it will just create that circle. So now if you're drawing on here, every single thing you do inside there is a perfect circle and they're all gonna be, you know, really nicely uh, created there. Those are kind of uh, some cool extra special rulers that you can use along with that perspective ruler. So that's about it. It's pretty easy, pretty simple, nothing too crazy. If this video is helpful, make sure to you know, like and subscribe to the video, all that fun stuff. I got a lot more Eclipse Studio Paint tutorials and stuff that I'm gonna be doing here on this channel. So until then, catch you later.